The patient will be advised by both the physiotherapist and the occupational therapist to adhere to the following hip precautions for at least 3 months to prevent dislocation of the implants at the hip surgical site. The following exercises are designed to improve the range and strength of your new hip. It is important to perform these exercises daily to help you to return to your daily activities as soon as possible. Do not modify any of these exercises unless instructed by your physiotherapist. Do perform these exercises three times a day with your operated leg. Apply ice for 20 minutes after each session. Hip bends. For the first exercise, what we need to do is to bend the right hip. Slowly slide the heel towards your body and then hold it there for about 10 counts. So just count the 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then slowly bring it down. Just need to repeat this 10 times. Lower leg raise. The aim of this exercise is to strengthen your thigh muscles. For the second exercise, what you just need to do is to place a road towel under your knee. We are going to strengthen the thigh muscle over here. Just need to tighten this muscle and then lift the lower leg off the bed. Up and then hold it for about 10 seconds or so. Okay, 10. One. Yeah. Then slowly relax and then bring your leg down. Rest and then after that repeat again. One, repeat this 10 two, times. And the next exercise is the straight leg raise. Um, it's a bit more difficult but we are also working on the muscles of the thigh. Bend this leg first for support and leave it here. Then for this one, you also need to tighten this muscle and then lift the leg off the bed. Lift it up and then also hold it for 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Good. Okay, slowly lower it down. Don't hold your breath when you're doing the exercises, just continue to breathe normally. Repeat this 10 times. The next exercise is hip abduction. So we're going to slide your hip um, outwards. It also to reduce the stiffness of your hip. This leg, just squeeze your buttock muscles together and then slide this leg out. Slide the leg out towards me. Mm. Like this and then go back in. Just this amount is fine. Don't cross the midline. Also 10 times. Yeah. The last exercise is bridging, um, also to strengthen your buttock muscles. This leg you bend first. Bend both legs, so this one also bend. For this exercise, what you need to do is to squeeze your buttock muscles and then lift your buttocks off the bed and then hold it for 10 seconds. You can try. Up. Good. Yep, that will do. And then hold it for about 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, and then slowly lower it down. Okay, very good. Stop the exercises if you feel more pain that does not get better with rest. Apply an ice pack as appropriate for swelling and pain relief. Seek advice from your physiotherapist before continuing the exercises. Using a walking frame. Madam Cecilia, now we will go for a walk. You can slowly try to stand, put your weight on your hands to help you to support yourself. And then just stand evenly first. Okay, so to walk with the frame, what you need to do first is to move the frame forward, one foot length, and then the operated leg, and then the non-operated leg. Very good. Yes. 
good. Using a broad base cord stick or narrow base cord stick or walking stick. You feel okay? Yeah. Not giddy. Yeah. Uh. We just check the height of the walking stick. Just make sure that this is at the wrist level. So hold it on the side of your non-operated leg. Move the stick in front slightly, then the operated leg, and then the non-operated leg. Operated leg, non-operated leg. Going up and down stairs. When you are going upstairs, step up with your non-operated leg first. Then, move the operated leg and the stick onto the same step. When you are going downstairs, place the stick on the step below. Step down with the operated leg, followed by the non-operated leg. Hi, good morning, Cecilia. Good morning. Hi, my name is Singi. I'm the occupational therapist. As occupational therapist, I will guide you on how to return to your daily activities after your hip operation, keeping in mind the hip precautions that you need to take note of. The first uh, precaution will be uh, we will try not to lift our legs up more than 90 degrees or bend our body far too far forward more than 90 degrees relative to your hip. The second uh, precaution will be to keep your foot straight outwards and not to turn inwards. The last precaution is to ensure that you do not cross your right leg over past midline. Let's try getting up from bed on your right side. First, I want you to use your elbows to prop yourself up and then your wrists to support yourself up into a sitting position. Next, scoot yourself out by bringing your legs to the edge of the bed. Yeah. Ensuring that your operated leg does not turn inwards and that you do not bend your body too far forward more than 90 degrees. Yeah, a little bit more. Don't worry, uh, you can bend your knees. An alternative method will be to get up from the non-operated side. And you will need a pillow that goes with this. The pillow is to prevent uh, your right leg from crossing over um, the midline. Okay. Yeah, it's just to support. So the pillow will be positioned in between your, uh, your both of your legs. Yeah, okay. And then I want you to roll your body uh, towards me. Yes, both your bodies. Okay. And then, now I want you to swing both of your legs off the bed. Yep. And then you can remove the pillow. Yep. Okay. And then support yourself and sit up. So, uh, this method can be used for if you get up from this side or that side. The pillow is used to prevent your operated leg from crossing over your midline while turning to the opposite side. So if you're getting up from the other side, the pillow is actually not necessary. I would suggest you to wear slip-on shoes rather than sandals that will require you to lift your leg or bend forward to secure the back straps. Use a shoehorn if required. Let's get up from the bed and move to the chair. Place your right foot slightly forward to prevent yourself from bending too much at the right hip. Yeah, you can touch the floor and add pressure to it, that's good. Okay, so now we can slowly make our way to the chair. Avoid sitting on low chairs. I would recommend sitting on stable chairs with back rest as well as arm rest that you can push off with your arms to prevent yourself from bending too far forward. Bring your right foot forward again and lower yourself slowly onto the chair while supporting yourself with your arms. When wearing your pants, start off with your operated leg first. Lower the pants and insert your foot in, keeping in mind not to bring your hips too high or bend too much forward. Use the armrest or walking frame to support yourself while standing from the chair. Stabilize yourself in a standing position before pulling your pants up past your hips and fasten your pants.
When taking off the pants, pull them down past your hips before lowering yourself onto the chair. Pull off from the non-operated leg first, followed by the operated leg. Okay, yeah. Remember not to lean too far forward to pick up your pants. You can use your non-operated leg to help with the lifting of the pants off the ground and picking it up like that. To set up your home environment in the toilet, because you just had your operation, um, I would recommend you to keep the things that you normally use in a bathroom within, uh, within your reach. So things like your towel, your clothing, the handheld uh, shower head, uh, as well as your soap and shampoo, all within reach. When you are getting up from the toilet, uh, I would suggest you similarly to scoot uh, to the edge and then push yourself off with the grab, grab rails at home. If your toilet seat is low, place a raised toilet seat to increase the height of the seat and prevent yourself from bending too far forward when getting up. You can place an anti-slip mat to minimize falls if the flooring of in your toilet and shower area is slippery when wet. To set up your home environment, we will try to place the commonly used items uh, like pot, pans, small cups for tea and coffee that you do use every day uh, on the tabletop or somewhere along the first row of drawers uh, like this, we have a spoon here. We will try to avoid overhead reaching that is too high up or things that you need to bend down low to take. Because you just had your operation, uh, I also would advise you to have a, a stable chair, uh, something like this with armrests. If you need to do things uh, on the tabletop like cook, small cooking uh, and you need to stand for a prolonged period of time. Okay Cecilia, so when you get into the car, I'd like you to position the back uh, rest uh, at about approximately 30 degrees and also to push the chair uh, further behind so that you got more leg space. As you sit on the car seat, uh, I would like you to put your uh, bottom on the car seat first before swinging your legs in. So, And then as you swing your legs in, I want you to lean against the backrest. So this is to ensure that uh, you continue to adhere to the hip precautions uh, without uh, bending your body more than 90 degrees relative to your hips. Okay, so this is how you get into the car. So now we're going to come out of the car. So. Uh, as you are coming out of the car, I'd like you to swing both of your legs uh, out, uh, one at a time. And then, yep, and then scoot forward a little bit before you stand up. Yep, okay, okay. And then when you're ready, stand up. Okay, very good. So that's how you get out of the car.